Today we will talking about windowing and clipping. If you are modeling any object, then the coordinates can start from minus infinity to plus infinity. In this infinite range, in these coordinates, which are normally referred to as the world coordinate system, out of this infinite range, we will normally take a finite portion of this range. Let us say starting from this value, which we will call as x min and going up to x max and in the y direction from y min to y max. If you take this finite portion of this infinite world, we will normally like to map this finite portion onto the screen coordinates. So, If this is the size of a screen, let us say this being a 0, 0 and this being the maximum in terms of x and y, we normally like this window to be mapped down to a finite portion of this screen. Okay? Maybe we will take the full screen or maybe we can even take a portion of the screen. What we would like to do is this portion of the world we would like to map onto this portion of the screen. Okay? So, this is referred to as a screen coordinate system. In this screen coordinate system, the x and the y values will again range from let us say if we call this as the x viewing minimum and this is the x viewing maximum. Similarly, this is the y viewing minimum, sorry, this will be the y viewing maximum and this will be the y viewing minimum. Okay? Now, this finite portion is referred to as the window. Okay, this is a window out of the infinite world. A window is thus a finite portion of the infinite world. This portion is referred to as the viewport. Okay, this is a part of the complete screen on which this window is to be displayed. Okay, so, if you have any objects inside this window, we like this object to be displayed here like this. Okay, similarly, if you have a line here, we like that line to be displayed here. Okay. When this line is displayed here, its size as well as its coordinates, they will be very different from the size and the coordinates over here. Okay. These coordinates are in what are termed as the world coordinate system. These coordinates will be in the screen coordinate system. Okay. Typically, let us say if your screen has a resolution of 1024 cross 1024. And these coordinates will be in this range between 0 and 1023. Okay, this xy maximum would then be 1023, 1023. Okay, so, these coordinates will be in this range, but these coordinates can be in minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, and if, it, if they are within this window, they will be in the range of between y min and y max and x min and x max. How do we transform the coordinates of, let us say the coordinates of this point onto this point? We will have some transformations, we will go into the transformations later on. Today what we will see is, 
And let's say in this window, if we have a line which is going like this, or if we have a line which is outside this window, we need to know that this line is outside the window so that we do not draw it over here. Okay, this line should not be drawn on this because this viewport is supposed to draw only those lines or those entities which are inside this window. Okay, so, if you have a line like this that should not be drawn and if you have a line like this, this line should only be drawn partially like this. The rest of the line should not be drawn. So, we will say that this line should be clipped along this edge. That means, whatever is outside this edge, outside this window that should not be drawn. Is that okay? So, that is what we mean by clipping. Whatever is inside that should be drawn completely, whatever is outside the window that should not be drawn, whatever is partially inside and partially outside that should be cut along the edges. Okay, if you have a circle like this, only this part of the arc should be drawn. If you have a triangle like this, only this part of the triangle should be drawn. Okay, we do not want to draw anything outside the viewport obviously. Okay, so, we will just see how this clipping can be done. If this is the window, if these are the four boundaries of this window, what we have to ensure? an edge like this should get clipped at these two intersection points. Okay, an edge like this should not be drawn at all. Okay, an edge like this should be clipped here. Okay, only a portion inside that should be displayed. And how do we do that? Let's say this is the one end point. This is the second end point. How do we clip it? along the intersection point, we will need to find the intersection of this line with the line x equal to x min. Okay, similarly, we will need to find the intersection of the line p 1 p 2 with the line y equal to y max. Okay, for this line, let us say this is p 3 and this is p 4. For the line p 3 p 4, we will have to find out the intersection with the line x equal to x min and x equal to x max. Okay, so we have to find all these intersections and it is very important that all this be done as efficiently as possible. Efficiency is of prime concern because this clipping is done very frequently and whenever this clipping is done typically we will have a number of entities in the world. Okay, so, we like to do it as efficiently as possible so that the uh, clipping should be done fast. Okay, speed is of prime concern. Okay. One way of increasing the efficiency is that if we can know for sure that some lines are outside, that means let us say if we have a line like this, if a line is outside this window, I should not try to find out the intersection of this line with each of the four boundaries. Okay, so let us say for a line like this A B, if I try to find the intersection of A B with either of these lines x min 
x max y min and so on if you find any of these intersections this exercise is going to be wasteful okay because this line is totally outside and wherever the intersections lie irrespective of that the line is not going to be displayed so the first thing that we normally do is we try to see if a particular line is totally out of the window if a line is totally outside the window that is it is either above the y max line or below the y min line or to the right of the x max line or to the left of the x min line at least such lines should be removed altogether i should not try to clip them or find the intersection with the boundaries okay so the first thing that we'll do is identify invisible lines similarly if the line is completely inside if the line is completely inside even then i need not find out the intersections okay because the line is inside there is no point in finding out the intersections i have to draw the complete line anyway okay so i'll again try to identify completely visible lines okay and only for lines which are partially visible okay lines which are partially inside the window and partially outside we should try to find out the intersection with the edges of the window okay and then for partially visible lines we'll find out the intersection and so on okay for this we'll have a different set of steps okay how do we identify whether a line is completely visible or completely invisible as i said one way is that lines which are totally above the y max line will always be totally invisible how do i check whether a line segment ab is totally above the y max line i'll have to compare the y coordinates of the points a and b okay so i can say if y of a is greater than y max and y of b is also greater than y max then the line is invisible similarly i can have constraints for each of the four lines okay so if y of a is less than y max y min and y of b is also less than y min that means the line is somewhat like this okay you then the line will be totally invisible instead of checking for constraints like this checking such constraints a number of times can become slightly messy okay instead of that we use what is called as a four point code with respect to every line let's say if we take a point here okay if we take a point here now this point is to the left of the line x min okay it is the, above the line y min but below the line y max so with respect to every point oh sorry with respect to every edge we'll give it a one point code 
okay so for this point we have 1 2 3 4 since this point is to the left of the x min line we will give it a code of 1 okay if it is above the y min line we will give it a code of 0 it is below the y max line we will give it a code of 0 okay and it is to the left of the x max line we will give it a code of 0 okay so if any point is to the left of the x max line okay mind you the visible portion is also to the left of the x max line okay if any point is to the left of this x max line corresponding to that we give it a code of 0 if this point was to the right of the x min line we will again give it a code of 0 ok so with respect to x min x max y min and y max with respect to each of them our code will be either 0 or 1 if we are to the left of x min will give it a code of 1 if you are to the right of x min will give it a code of 0 if you are to the left of x max will give it a code of 0 if you are to the right will give it a code of 1 if i take y min if i am below y min then i'll give it a code of 1 if i am above i'll give it a code of 0 Similarly, y max, if I am below y max, I will give it a code of 0. If I am above y max, I will give it a code of. If I am above y max, I will give it a code of 1. As a result, if a point is inside this region, it will get a code of 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. <coughs> if a point in this is in this region, the point is below y min, so it gets a code of. Uh, okay, let's say this is a y max, this is a y min, x max, and x min. So if this is a y max, it is below y max, it gets a code of zero. It is above, it is below y min, it gets a code of one. Okay, it is the left of x min. Left of x min x min means one, and uh, it is to the left of x max also. So it will get zero. So this code I am using for the first bit. I am using with respect to x min. This I am using with respect to x max. This I am using with respect to y min, and this with respect to y max. Okay. If I then if a point is in this region, what code will it get? The first bit with respect to x min would be zero. With respect to x max will also be zero. With respect to y min, again we are on the wrong side, so it will be one and this will be zero. Okay. If you are here with respect to x max will be one, this will be zero and this would be 0 1 okay and this will probably be 0 0 1 0 okay if you if you come here then respect to y 1 0 0 1 and this would become Okay, so in these nine regions, the point will get a different code. 
If the point is here, it becomes one zero zero one. If it is here, it gets one triple zero, and so on. Okay. Now, if one point is here and a second point is here, both of them will get the code of zero 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 one. If one point is here and the other point is here, this will get a code of zero one zero one. This will get a code of one zero zero one. Both these points are to the left of x min. Okay, so the bit corresponding to x min will be one for both of them. Okay, so if I take any line segment and out of the four bits, any one bit is a is one for both the endpoints. Okay, that would mean the line is totally outside the window. Okay, if I take a point here and a point here. In that case, I get a with respect to y min, both the points are lying below. Okay, so y min. So the, uh, this third bit here and the third bit here both will be one. Okay, so if I take the code for point one and the code for point two. Okay, and I take the intersection of these codes. Okay, and the intersection of these codes has a one at any location, or the intersection of these codes is not equal to zero. In that case, the line segment will be totally out of the window. Is that okay? So if the code for point one intersection of the code of code for point two is not equal to zero, that means line is invisible, completely invisible. Okay. Similarly, if I have a point here and a point here, then the code for both of them has to be zero 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 zero. Okay, so if I say that the code for point one union with the code for point two is equal to zero, okay, then the line is completely visible. Okay, if the line is inside, then the both the endpoints will have a code of zero. Therefore, the union will be equal to zero. If the line is to one side of either of the four edges, then the corresponding bit will be one, and therefore the intersection will not be equal to zero, and then the line will be totally invisible. Okay, and these bits. Can easily be set for each point, just by comparing them with the x and the y coordinates of the edges. Okay, so by using this four, the four-bit code. Okay, this is a four-bit code. By using this four-bit code, we can very easily check whether the line is completely invisible or whether the line is completely visible. Okay. Of course, there will be some cases like this. Okay, if you take this zero one zero zero and zero zero one zero, their intersection will be equal to zero. But even then, the line is completely invisible. Okay. In such cases, the, these checks are not going to result as, result in any decision. We cannot say, we cannot decide on the basis of these checks that the line is invisible. Only when the intersection is not equal to zero will the line be invisible. 
okay only when the intersection is not equal to 0 we can say confidently that the line is invisible but if this condition is not satisfied and this condition is also not satisfied then the line can be invisible or the line can be partially visible okay whether the line is like this or the line is like this we can decide that only by finding out the intersection points okay so this four bit code will help us in weeding out those lines which are com which are which satisfy either this criteria or this criteria okay any question up to this point okay then for the other lines okay for lines like this for lines like this how do we go about clipping these lines the first is we check for these lines and then start finding out the intersections okay so if i write it crudely the first step is find four point codes for p1 and p2 we are trying to clip the line segment p1 p2 okay so we'll find the four point codes for p1 p2 then we'll check for these conditions let's say condition 1 and con condition 2 okay we'll check for these conditions condition 1 and condition 2 okay so i'll just write if condition 1 is satisfied then line is invisible neglect it if condition 2 is satisfied then line is visible draw it okay otherwise what will we do We we'll find out the intersection of P1, P2 with the window border. Okay, and check which part is inside and which part is outside. Okay, we'll have to find out <coughs> the intersection of this edge with all the four edges, all the four uh, edges of the window. We we'll get one intersection here, the other intersection here. We'll say that these two intersections are outside this line segment. So we'll ignore that. We'll find out this intersection and this intersection, and then decide that this line is outside, this line is inside, and this line is outside. And we'll finally display this edge. Okay. So in this fourth step, we'll have to find out the intersection with each of the four uh, edges of the window, and check as to which part of the line segment is inside and which part is outside. Okay, this is one clipping algorithm for line segments. Okay, any questions about this clipping algorithm? We we'll just uh, change the uh, modify this clipping algorithm to increase speed further or to make it more efficient. Okay, any questions about this clipping algorithm? Okay. 
we'll now see a clipping algorithm which is attributed to Sutherland and Cohen. Sutherland and Cohen are the names of two scientists who have developed this algorithm. Okay. Now, the problem of the previous algorithm that comes is that when we have a line like this, okay, we have to find out the intersection of this line with each of the four edges of the window. We will first find out let us say this intersection okay. but then I also have to check whether this intersection is inside the line segment or not. Okay, well, since this intersection is outside is really not relevant. Okay, only an intersection which is inside this line segment is going to be relevant. Okay. Similarly, at this point, this intersection is also outside this line segment, so that is also not relevant. In order to take care of all these, what we can do is, let us say this is our clipping edge okay, and we have a line to be clipped which is a line like this. Okay, I call this as the correct side of the clipping edge, this is my clipping edge. And this is the wrong side. Okay. Again please. The correct side is the visible side. The correct side is the visible side. And the wrong side is the wrong side. Okay. So if I am considering this as the clipping edge, the right hand side is the visible edge or the correct side and the left hand side is the wrong side. Okay. Now, if I have a line segment whose both the endpoints are on the correct side, then no clipping has to be performed with respect to the clipping edge. That is straightforward. Similarly, if I have a line segment which is which has both its endpoints on the wrong side, even then no clipping has to be performed with respect to this edge. Okay. Only when I have one endpoint on one side and the other endpoint on the other side. Okay, I have one endpoint which is P1 which is on the correct side and P2 which is on the wrong side. Only in that case do I need to perform the clipping. Okay. So, in the Sutherland Cohen clipping algorithm, we will perform clipping with respect to each edge separately. Let us say this is my edge number 1, this is my edge number 2, this is my edge number 3 and this is my edge number 4. Okay. I will first perform clipping with respect to edge number 1 and I will check whether both the endpoints are on the correct side or both of them are on the wrong side. If both of them are on the correct side, no clipping has to be performed with respect to edge number 1. If both of them are on the wrong side, again no clipping needs to be performed, the line can be ignored. If one point is on one side, the other is on the other side, I will find out the intersection and the line from the point P1 to this intersection point I, this is the line we are interested in. Okay. So, just write down this algorithm.
will repeat with respect to each window edge the first thing is Okay, check whether the line is completely visible or completely invisible. Okay, that means both the points are on the correct side or both the points are on the wrong side. Okay. If either of the two condition is satisfied, then we can take action accordingly and uh, complete and come out of the algorithm. Okay. Otherwise, what we'll do is. CS is for correct side. I just explain uh, what we are doing. What I said is, if P1 is on the correct side, continue, else swap P1 and P2. Uh, in this case, P1 is on the correct side, P2 is on the wrong side. Okay, there is no problem. But if my line segment was like this and this was P1 and this was P2, P1 is on the wrong side and P2 is on the correct side. I want to exchange the points P1 and P2. I want to call this as P1 and this as P2. Okay, I want to call the point on the correct side as P1. So that when I find out the intersection from P1 to the intersection I, that point I will take as a clip segment. If this is P1, then from P2 to I, I have to take P2 to I. I don't want to do that. I want to take from P1 to I. Okay, so this is P1 and this is P2. I'll swap P1 and P2 and still take the line segment from P1 to I. Okay. Now what is the solution? Okay. So if P1 is on the correct side, continue. Else, swap P1 and P2. Okay, and then find the intersection of P1, P2 with the edge, with the clipping edge, and clip the line segment P1, P2 to P1, I. Sir, why is the swapping necessary? Again, please. Why is the swapping of the points P1 and P2 necessary? Okay. If I don't swap, what I have to check for is which point is on the correct side and which is on the wrong side. If P2 is on the correct side, then the clipped line will be P2I and not P1I. Is that okay? So I'll have to keep track of whether P1 is on the right side or P2 is on the right side. I don't want to keep tra extra track of that. Okay, I'll just check for that and swap them and make sure that P1 is on the right, right side. Okay. So after the step two. I know for sure that P1 is on the correct side. Okay, and then in step three, I just find out the intersection of P1, P2 with the clipping edge, 
and the line will get clipped to P1i. Okay, and then I will take this line and repeat it and clip it with respect to the remaining three edges. Okay, so, first I have taken, I will repeat this whole process with respect to edge 1, then with respect to edge 2 and so on, I mean edge 3 and edge 4. Okay, the first step is check, check for completely visible or invisible line. If you expand this step out, if the line is completely invisible, then the clip line itself is P1, P2. Okay, and then this clip line P1, P2 will be passed on to the next edge for further clipping. If the line is completely invisible, in that case, uh, the, the line to be passed will be a blank line. No clipping will be done after that because the line is totally invisible. Okay, so, if the line is completely invisible, my clipping algorithm can end. If the line is completely visible, then this clipped edge has to be passed on to the next clipping edge and the process will have to be repeated for each of the edges. Okay. So, this algorithm is called a Sutherland Cohen algorithm, Sutherland Cohen clipping algorithm and the important thing in this algorithm is first clipping is done with respect to each edge separately and secondly we are making sure that the point P1 is always on the correct side. So, that it becomes easier to say that P1 i will always be the clipped edge, otherwise we will have to decide whether it is P1 i or P2 i. Okay. So, the next step is Sutherland Cohen clipping algorithm. Okay. Continuing with clipping further, so far we have been talking of clipping of line segments only. If instead of a line segment, if we have, let us say this is a clipping window, and if you have curves, okay. If you have a curve like this and a curve has to be clipped, then clearly the algorithm that we were using so far will not be valid for this curve. Even if I take a simple curve, a simple arc like this, okay, even though both the endpoints of the arc might be inside, a part of my curve can still be outside. Okay, same algorithm will not work. The second problem is that if we have regions okay, or an area to be clipped, an area can be defined by let us say a polygon. We want this area to be clipped. Okay, we like to clip this to this portion. Okay, so, if you have a polygon given as a, given as a list of points, a list of vertices, we like to be able to clip it and find out the clipped polygon. Okay. So, with respect to curves, the way we will do clipping for curves normally is that we will divide this curve into a sequence of small line segments. Okay. For display of curves, they are normally approximated as a sequence of line segments. Okay. And then, once it is approximated as a sequence of line segments, we will do the clipping of line segments. Okay. So, the curves, they will be reduced to lines. Okay. And if you have a closed region bounded by a polygon, if you want to do the clipping for polygons, then we will have a special algorithm for that which we will see in the next class. Okay, how do we carry out a clipping of polygon so that we can get a clipped polygon? Okay, a polygon as we have seen earlier is a list of vertices P1, P2 till Pn. We want to clip this and get a list of vertices let us say Q1, Q2 till Qm 
where this is the clipped polygon and this is the original p1 is the original polygon how do we do this that we will see in the next class for curves we will normally approximate a curve by a set of lines and then do the clipping okay any questions on clipping that i have covered today If you look at this window, we say that this window is a finite portion of the infinite world. Okay. If you want to do the clipping at the time of displaying a pixel, okay, you decide whether the pixel is inside or outside. Just imagine some curve or some entity which is at a very large distance. You also have to display that and then find out the pixels which will correspond to that. Okay, the idea of clipping is that whichever portion is outside, you will not try to write down the or you will not try to run the display algorithm for that. Okay, if you try to run the display algorithm for that, you will end up doing a lot of wasteful competition. This portion might be let us say only 1 percent of your complete uh, set of entities you have. If you have a let us say an entity over here, no point finding out which pixels will correspond to this circle and then for each of those pixels saying that those pixels are outside the window. But then for each of the line segments we will have to do that anyways as of what we are doing now. What we will do is we will divide this into line segments. Initially it, it can be very coarse and find out which line segments are inside and which are outside. If we find out that the complete curve is trivially outside we will not bother about it. Okay. Uh, the other thing is for entities like curves, I mean for entities like circles, we can easily find out the bounds of the circle. If those bounds are completely outside the clipping window, we can ignore that circle. Okay. We need not even uh, try to display that or clip that. Okay. Our basic idea is that we will try in clipping, we will try to remove as many entities as possible without displaying them. Okay, because we know the display is slow. Okay, because in display you are going to compute uh, the details of each and every pixel. And in fact, if you remember, in some of the display algorithms, we are using space which is proportional to the uh, number of pixels. Okay, so if we are talking of an infinite space, we really can't do that. Okay, we cannot have infinite uh, number of pixels and uh, uh, decide the intensity of each pixel and so on. We will have to, if we try to compute the pixel corresponding to each of these points, depending on the number of entities that we have, that can also become very expensive. Okay. So, first thing we do is, we try to see whether this curve has any portion common with the window. If it does not, we will ignore that. If it does, only then we try to do the clipping for that. Okay, and for that we will approximate it by a set of lines and then do it. So, then we know that some portion is going to be common. Okay, even let us say for a curve like this, if we start finding out the set of pixels that will correspond to the invisible part of the curve, we will have to find out for each of these pixels, we will have to find out whether the pixels are inside or outside. That is going to be wasteful. Instead of that, we will divide this into a sequence of line segments. Okay, normally what we do is we initially start with a very coarse division like this. Okay, and only if we feel the need we will start bringing them closer. Okay, if we feel that let us say from here to here uh, one uh, a part of the curve is going to be inside, then we will uh, subdivide it further and so on. We will be seeing more of this in detail in some of the later topics.
Okay. So I think that, in, that uh, at that point it will become much clearer. Any other questions? <coughs> so that's all for today then. We'll.